Of course I find camp at night, cause we are Grand Overland. But wow, was I gifted a gem of a campsite with killer cliffside views. Hitting Cottonwood Canyon, the desert doesn't disappoint. Putting forth a spectacular show of unparalleled architecture. Which leads to one of the most jaw-dropping designs of the natural world, culminating in a formidable moonscape and dewy. Typical Dane and Grand Overland fashion, pulled up to camp at night. So I'm not really sure what I got into. I was on uh, going through Red Canyon, kind of over by Bryce Canyon and whatnot, off of 12 Sargent Road. There was camping. Pulled over, and I think that you can see, like back there, I may have gotten lucky, and landed myself right next to a canyon, which uh, there is, there it is, um, which would be pretty awesome. But looking forward to seeing what it looks like in the morning. Perfect night to start off what should be a once-in-a-lifetime trip. But is the campsite any good? Let's see where we ended up this morning. Sorry, I looked at the screen, but. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. And somebody already wanted to go check out what we had going on. Morning, Dewey. That's a good boy. Looking for a place to camp like a blind drunk squirrel in the middle of the night, I'd say a nut was found. Sometimes you just gotta get lucky. So, good or bad omen? This little guy and I got in a little late last night, as I'm sure you saw. But, in my experience, some of the best things in life happen uh, after dark, and as luck would have it, this campsite is pretty freaking awesome. Honestly, it's kind of worth coming here on its own merit. The drive down um, is Red Canyon is gorgeous. I couldn't really film, it was a little too dark but you're going through a bunch of arches and like man-made uh, tunnels and whatnot. And then this place is, you can see it, this campsite's right on the canyon. And I flew the drone around, which you probably already saw or you're about to see. And there's some arches over there and some huge overhangs. So this place is pretty awesome, totally lucked out. And then make our way down to the Vermilion Cliffs and see if, uh, I can roll those dice again and get another uh, kill a campsite for the night. I'd say I got lucky last night for sure, and didn't even have to deal with an awkward morning or a lonely Uber ride home. This was just supposed to be a pit stop to rest up on the way to the highlight destinations, but this canyon and cliff face decided to offer up its own magic. Sometimes the no-name places are the real gems. This location looks to have so much to offer and have only just scratched the surface. So remember, landing the prom queen doesn't always mean that you're going to have a fun night. Back to more serious matters, a photo shoot on a rocky escarpment with the famous Dewey takes precedence for obvious reasons. And the creepy manager. Time to wrap up this daydreaming session and cover some miles. This is a trail to the campsite. It really is inconspicuous. There's Dewey and his obsession with wild new cows. Hi, buddies. How's it going? Oh, you gonna get him, Dewey? You gonna get him? What are you gonna do? Finally hit the first official trail, although this is still pavement which is why it's so nice and quiet but this road on the map is called um, Kodachrome but on trails off road I guess it turns into Cottonwood Canyon at some point it's supposed to be scenic and take you right into the heart of the Vermilion Cliffs area was gonna go straight in and go find a sweet campsite but that iconic picture that everybody takes the wave where it's all like wee and red and pretty and all that. Um, I might have to go throw on a bikini and get Dewey out there and do, uh, I don't know, like a little Sports Illustrated uh, photo shoot. Alrighty, the official start to this trail day. Oh man, crazy big water crossing. Woo! 
so now we're on Cottonwood Road, which is on the dirt. Now I feel more at home, which is in, if I'm pronouncing this correctly, Kodachrome Basin. Hence why it started off as that name coming out of town. But things are getting really pretty. I've taken some shots on the outside. Um, but I get the feeling the more we make our way into the heart of Vermilion uh, Cliff area, it's gonna get super pretty. So for a bit there, I really thought this was just gonna be a, kind of a through trail to get to A to B without having to use blacktop, but I was wrong. It got super pretty, as you guys can see, with, believe it or not, red cliffs in the Vermilion Cliff area, and washes and mesas and all the good stuff. The textures, the colors, and the jagged sculptures of this stretch looks like it was created by a powerful, heavenly, creative being after consuming a big bag of Colorado mushrooms. I was completely enamored with the visual topography of this area. Never seen anything quite like it. So on the uh, second half of this trail, there is a small creek that runs through it surrounded by cottonwoods. And it turns out there's a lot of camping through here and a lot of trails that go to some hoodoos and some canyons. So it kind of looks like you could really spend some time back in here and get some pretty sweet spots. But I will say, I mean, it is oof, uh, September uh, 6th, 7th, 8th, something like that. And it is 99 degrees at 4.30 in the afternoon. So it's hot. That last area, it was pretty neat, but this valley is on another level. Cream and crimson cliffs and ominous crags appear to be squeezing the desert floor together, forcing the back of a great dragon to the surface. These perfectly spaced pyramid mounds look to be created with intent and defy your mind's logical expectations. The slot canyons slicing their way through the Neapolitan stone cliffs are just begging to be explored with irresistible siren songs. But time is not on our side. No, it isn't. Disappearing off into the distance, I feel as though I just awoke from a fever dream fueled by the relentless heat. But this place is real, although it is what dreams are made of. I will be back. Once past that magical valley, the land still provides you with plenty to look at as it changes its personality. Floodplains carry into what seems to be an endless expanse of achromatic tones. Well, first Dewey overheated. And then phone overheated and that went out. And now the GoPro's acting funny and I've probably smelt better. It's, uh, you can see that with the glare, a cool 100 degrees. And this, this is just something I thought looked cool. We made it to the end and if it was like 20 degrees colder, so it was only like 80 out, it would have been really, really nice. It was a super cool trail actually, a lot to do. You could spend a lot of time there, but uh, I was dying, Dewey was dying, um, my equipment was dying. Um, it's just too freaking hot. But, so we're leaving the, look over behind me, Grand Staircase Escalante area, and going, I guess, more towards the Vermilion Cliff area, getting my stuff kind of backwards. Um, I could have completely just not done this and taken 89, which is right there, straight to uh, the next trail. But I just wanted to check some more stuff out, but I'm hoping this next trail goes it's not going to up or in a canyon or something because she hot and remember what's your goal that's a big pile of rocks 
And these are signs. This sign says, depending on the weather, it could be extra fun, I think is what it says. And that used to be a different color. So that's why they indent their name. 